Okay guys, uh, now I'm going to review my little 1150 scale Tomy Tech vehicles. Uh, they're part, they have a, a line called the uh, Car Collection. Well, if you're going to search for these, you just want to look up 1150 Car Collection Tomy or Tomy Tech. I don't know why this company has to have 17 different names like Takara Tomy and Tomika. Anyways, it's all the same company uh, and they make great stuff. So... First, let's just talk about uh, scale, you know. This is a 128 scale Kyosho. It's an RC vehicle. It's pretty cool. Uh, this is a 143rd scale Kyosho. Another cool RC car. Your standard 164 scale kind of vehicle. And so, just for reference here, one... Uh, 1150 is a pretty small vehicle and you know in the space of 1 164 you could probably have 10 of these vehicles back here are some 187s it's just my temporary backdrop here I'm just kind of sitting indoors being uh, stuck inside with the covid so I thought I'd throw this video up there anyways uh you can see in this set here there's a lot of detail going on you know, the uh, tail lights are painted, the headlights are painted, there's a, uh, the spare tire on this poli p police vehicle actually has printing on it, some Japanese printing on the side of it as well. So, it's quite impressive, you know, for such a small scale. It's the kind of stuff you expect in 164, or larger, but, uh, Tomi, they don't mess around. Tomika, Takara Tomi, I don't know what company you want to call it, but these are under Tomi Tech, so... Uh, if you're curious what these vehicles are, they're actually a Suzuki Alto is the white, plain white vehicle. A Suzuki Hustler is the pink vehicle. Uh, Suzuki Jimny patrol car. And the Honda N-Box Custom is the uh, brownish, purplish little van here. Anyways, so I have a bunch more I'm going to just show you here. I bought all these to... Uh, the accessories for my 1200 scale airplane collection. There aren't many vehicles in the 1200 scale, so these are the closest to them because they're small Japanese vehicles. Okay, so what do we have next here? These things come in sets of four, usually. So this is a, the next set, the F5 collection. Okay. I guess the only gripe I have with this, these are, you know, you get spoiled by larger scales. I'm okay with the taillights being painted, but the headlights being painted looks pretty bad in my opinion. But uh, there's nothing better at this scale, in my opinion, as far as uh, detail goes. So N scale, or 1160, is a railroading scale, very popular probably the most popular railroading scale because of its size versus quality uh, and these are suited suitable for it technically they're a little bit large because these are 1 1 50 scale you know I know this because if you look at the bottom it actually says 1 1 50 let me see if I can zoom aren't many uh, there it's kind of upside down my bet anyways so yeah this one is from 2008 2003, hard to see here through the camera. Anyways, but yeah, you can look at the printing on the windows, the little uh, molding lines, the black molding lines. Anyways, so I'm looking at the internet as well, and these are the yellow car is a Nissan March, Honda Fit is the navy blue one, uh, the silver car is a Mazda Demio. And the Toyota Vitz is the white car. I believe that's the Yaris in uh, America. And the blue, the Demio, would be a Honda Fit. Oh, well, that's what I said anyways. All right, so let's move on to the next batch. And uh, just to let you know, these are actually to scale, just like Tomika Limited Vintage. I'm guessing they use the same model, CAD models. So what we have here is a red Honda Today. Let's see. A Suzuki Wagon R is this green vehicle. 
The Daihatsu Hijet is the yellow service vehicle. And then the Imiev by Mitsubishi, which is an, uh, an electric car. So that's what this set is all about. I like this set. The first and this set are pretty good. You'll notice this one has nice uh, license plate printing on there. Sorry about the zoom. Uh, yeah, the graphics are nice. The service vehicle has the red translucent uh, lights on the top. Wow. Yeah, you can see the little logo on the, you know, the Honda logo. The Mitsubishi logo. Let me try to stop this here. So, it's Mitsubishi. You can see a tiny tri-diamond, the Mitsubishi logo there. Alright, so, this green vehicle can show a little more contrast, so. It's really hard to zoom on something so small. But anyways, the car badge is on the hood there. Pretty impressive. Uh, resin models, you know, you can get fine detail. Look at the panel lines, the door cuts and stuff. You couldn't do this with die casts in most, I don't think you could. I don't think you can cast die casts that precise. So, that's why these are all resin. You'll notice the windows are quite clear. Pretty impressive. I don't see any seats inside though. It's just like a blank bottom. Yeah, there's no interiors. But you know, again, at this size, I'm not sure if you could demand such a thing. You'll see this actually has the door handles printed on it. Pretty cool. And really the hazard striping is pretty impressive. Okay, so that's that set there. Let's see what I got next here. Get into some classic cars. And I know I think most if not all of these are in the Tomiko Limited Vintage line, which makes me believe again they start with the larger vehicles and then throw and shrink them down perhaps to make these tiny versions so let me get the zoom here it's really hard to focus on something so small I know that's a sandbar um, the other vehicles I can't remember this gray one is a Mazda K360 uh, Daihatsu C08 three-wheeler is the blue-gray so it's gotta be this. This is a Daihatsu C08. And then the last one is a Toyo Ace. This larger, larger truck. At least that's what the internet says. But you'll see here on the Toyo Ace, there's some printing on the side. The yellow front grille. The yellow sidestep carries over. Um, let me take this cover off. You can see, again, impressive. The text of the brand is written uh, there on the front. The headlights are painted silver. I believe this is probably where the exhaust comes out. Let me get a pointer here. So this is a pen, just to give you an idea of scale again. This pen tip, look at this. So that is some serious detail going on. Ridges on the hood, ridges inside the, the bed. So the back printed on taillights and these come with a little you know cargo some box cargo can come out here so again the bed has ridges in it it's quite nice the well the front wheel of this doesn't roll but the the rears do it's just a plastic molding the axle is actually plastic looks like it just snaps in there you can see the text printed. I only wish they printed the text of the vehicle this is instead of me having to search the internet. I guess I'm learning the hard way. Well, it's not really the hard way when the entire world's knowledge is on the internet. Kids, you guys have it so easy now. I used to have to go to the library as a kid. Anyways, uh, yeah, Tomy Tech made in China. Sandbar. It's got the Subaru logo on there. I only wish they had like fake license plate numbers. Oh my goodness, you can see the ridging inside. Right above the license plate, there's a recess. And I'm not sure if you can tell, but there's actually ridges in there. 
That is, you could never get that in a die cast. It wouldn't be possible. Sorry, I just I'll get another flashlight and try to show you. Hopefully, you can see reaching in there. Anyways, that's a really impressive sight to see. All right, let's move on to the next set here. This one throws in a large vehicle. This is set E4, old and new commercial vehicles, it's called. So, let's try to space these out a little better for you guys. Try to zoom in, get the focus. All right, so what is in this set? We have an Isuzu Elf garbage truck, the yellow vehicle, a Mitsubishi Fuso Cantor 711 truck, a Toyota Yesuban Blue, I don't know, Yesuban, I don't know how to pronounce that, and then white vehicles, a Toyota Dyna. Anyways, so yeah, now this van, look at the trimming on the window, it's actually silver, silver trimming on the window, pretty nice. I don't recall any uh, cargo for the vehicle. But there's a printed on door graphic there. Alright, this thing's too big, so it's gonna go. Green license plate. There's a grill. Seems to be molded in there. No, it's printed. Air conditioner. The rear door details. Would have been nice if some of these were silver. Painted silver. Seeing how they do it on the other vehicles, I don't see why they couldn't have done that. Okay, so I'm going to remove this because I have some loose items that are not from sets, but they are similar. So I have a blue garbage truck as well. And for some reason that has, you know, printing on the back. Maybe that's a garbage company in Japan. All right. And then sharing the same chassis which again, I believe is in the larger 64 scale Tomika Limited, is the vacuum truck, and I think it's just like a fuel, not a fuel pump, but maybe a waste fluid truck. So, these are quite nice. You got some sort of, this logo is actually similar. It's the same logo as the blue one, so maybe it's the municipality logo or some sort of government government uh, logo saying this is a the government coming to clean up things anyways if you notice on this one boy that's tough to zoom or tough to focus look at these printed details going on there All right this hose I think it might be a separate piece black plastic hose there it actually has ridges Okay, it's an elf, it says elf on the front, you can actually, I can read it, hopefully it shows up on the video, okay, so cool service vehicles, definitely, alright, let's see what else we have here, I have another set here, and this is uh, just called set G3, I'm going to try to spread these out a little, so, and focus. So, set G3, we have a beige colored Honda TN7, a fire van, which is a Nissan Caravan. The uh, Panasonic truck is a Suzuki, Subaru Sambar. And then the Mazda Bongo van is also a Panasonic. So, but. I guess that's a Mazda Bongo van. I've never heard that, that name before. It's interesting, the evolution of the sandbar. You know, the first sandbar is this light blue one. As vehicles move on and progress through their generations, they tend to get larger due to safety standards, due to luxury. You know, you, cars just get bigger over time, at least to a certain limit, the, the width of a road, really. All right, let's see what the... Nicer ones that are here. Let me 
of this. That's nice printing. Again, the molding. You can see the black molding lines. The trim around the windows. But really, I'm a fan of this red one. The silver trim around the windows. Those headlights. The printing on gold printing on the side, on the back. And then there in the top, you have some recessed translucent plastic uh, lights. And maybe that's an air conditioner box at the top or some sort of air intake. Again, there's no interiors, but uh, you know, I'm okay with that. The vehicle badging there on the front. So cool, so cool. Okay, let's see. This next one, here's a set, the taxi and hire set. Coming up here. These are loose, so I picked up uh, these two. And let's see, there's a Gloria and a Cedric Taxi. I believe this this one is the Gloria, and that might be the Cedric, but I might be mistaken. Very classic looking cars, remind me of the 50s. And uh, oh, the internet's not telling me when these came about, but eh, pretty cool. You know, different from all the other ones, such a crazy color combination but if you need to hail a taxi you'd, you'd have to have pretty bad vision to not be able to see this but again look at the text printing on the doors there the light on the hood the top the, the roof is actually just painted white you'll see on mine it oh but there's a little dot on the front of it I don't know but it's on both of them, so I guess these taxis back in this uh, time had something. I'm not sure what that would be. Anyways, door handles are painted on. This one, if you look at the hood, little silver accents painted on. So we're in the top of this. Hopefully, you can see the ridges here on the vents of the hood. Crazy. That's some there. Crazy detail, right? So you know, people say, oh, these are so detailed and stuff. And they are, you know, 164 scale. That's great detail. But I mean that's that's pretty nice detail too, and it's so small. It's crazy. This is a Toyota Celica XX, which is the red one. The brown one is a Toyota Mark II, and then the white one is a Nissan Cedric Taxi. So, Celica XX, Mark II, Cedric Taxi. A couple of police cars I picked up loose, and uh, sorry for my laziness, I didn't research which was which. All I know is the internet is telling me there's... They're either a Datsun Bluebird, a Toyota Corona, or a Nissan Cedric. Now, I'm pretty sure it's a Corona and perhaps a Cedric. I don't recall a... Well, I don't know. I'm just guessing now. Anyways, if you look at the translucent uh, light on the roof, printing on the hood, the door... Front's not so great. Yeah, all right. So a couple of police cars, not really my favorite. All right, we got a couple Toyota Crowns, more modern vehicles. So quite large, you know, compared to cars of decades before, right? Well, that's a K car, so. Yeah, Toyota logos on the rear. Transition light up top. That one's a painted yellow light. Well, unfortunately, because the headlights are so big and they're just painted silver, I'm not a fan of these cars. They don't look as nice, you know. The wheels are different, more modern looking. I wouldn't doubt there's, they're actually specific to a crown. If you want to see the top here. Okay. 
And then we have a couple other vans. I think they're, they're Toyota Hiace. Yeah. These are Toyota Hiace vans or Hiace. I'm not sure how you pronounce it again. You'll notice the logo's a little different because it's from an earlier time. This ambulance. I mean, we got a lot going on here. Right? Roof boxes. I'm guessing air intake and perhaps an air conditioner. Right? The text on the side. You notice the little ridges here where you'd have some uh, passive air ventilation sucking air out the rear. The model printing there. There's a little keyhole dot printed there. All right? Silver to accent the little, uh, I would assume they must have been chrome uh, lights for it to illuminate the, the license plate. And then paint it on. Oh my goodness. Alright, so again, there's a little step here for the rear for people to get the gurney in there and it actually has ridges on there. Whereas this one, not being an ambulance, it just has a normal bumper. Alright, so they bothered to make that change. That's pretty cool. Alright. Alright, so we got four more and they're quite. They're larger. I don't know why I picked this up. It was cheap. I think I bought it for five dollars. It is a Tomy van, but again, you know, it's look at the detail. You have a schedule there on the front. The silver trim around the windows. A schedule in the rear. I mean, this uh, there's a license plate here in the rear. Schedule board. Although, weird again, there's plenty of room to say what vehicle this is, and they don't bother to do it. All it says is JB013. Like, I'm supposed to know what that code means to to me. But anyways, yeah, the front. We have a license plate, painted in uh, headlights. But really, it's that Japan Rail schedule on the front. It's recessed behind the clear plastic. So you can see, hopefully you can see the depth of it. A little handicap tampo there. Very neat. Very neat, but unfortunately, I can't put this next to my uh, 200 scale planes. It's just too big. It looks too out of scale. The little classic vehicles, because they're physically smaller than modern vehicles, they fit into my 1-200 scales nicer, but modern vehicles can't do it. Here's the top of that thing. We're at the air conditioning unit. Look at that. Cool. All right, these are too big to sh show in two with my one two hundred scale planes, but they're just so cool. I had to get them anyways. So first one is this fuel truck here. I can't read Japanese, but that's some sort of fuel truck. Uh, you can actually read the text here. It says Nissan Diesel on the on the grill. All right, license plate is printed. Nice hazard lines. Yeah, that grill has ridges. It's not printed. It's physically molded in the grill. The three windshield wipers are painted silver. This one actually you can have seats. You can see the seats in there. But you know, it's a much bigger vehicle. The little uh, side protection to keep people from getting sucked under the truck. I'm not sure what that text on the back would be for. I'm not a, you know fuel truck driver there's a spare wheel here on the bottom you know indications of an exhaust system indications of some leaf suspension very neat this one says 2006 so that's cool just because you know it's nice to see a two axles in the front kind of truck all right so one of my favorites is a shell version, so better grill side protection with the top here. You know, I've never seen the top of a fuel truck, but it's believable, right? You have different uh, compartments to keep the fluid from sloshing around and you know making the truck unstable. The ladders here, pretty thin, mo thinly molded, pretty impressive. The door handles. 
Let's see the front here. So yeah, UD Trucks. This is actually a Chinese truck brand, I believe. Maybe, uh, anyways, license plate. Uh, I don't know what that green thing is, but... Unfortunately, because of the whole bumper silver, the headlights just kind of vanish. But I suppose that'd be close in real life as well. Alright, so the bottom again. Same chassis as the other one, it seems. Seeing how it's two axles up front. Alright. So now the biggest, and but maybe the coolest, is uh, this tractor-trailer fuel truck. So it's a Mitsubishi Fuso, or Fuso. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Uh, does it separate? Yes. Okay. Let's take a look at the tractor. All right. So fuel tank. I'm not sure what that is. I believe these must be pressure cylinders of some sort. Maybe for hydraulics. Air braking? I don't know. I'm not a truck driver. I know this is the air intake system here. Hopefully you can see. Alright, look at all these ridges molded in. It's not printed, it's actually molded. A rubber trim around the windows. Door handles printed on there. Fuso is printed there. Alright. Yeah, it's a larger vehicle, so I can understand this being able to print no problem. But it's nice to see actual license plate numbers. You know, other other companies, they just have a blank plate. Even within this line, they're blank license plates. But I'd rather have some random fake numbers. Make it more realistic, you know? Okay, so the trailer. Same uh, type of things on the top. Fill caps, air purge vents. Uh, there's some numbering here. Four. They're all, f and then the middle one's two. There's some sort of logic behind that, but I don't know what that really is. Whoa! Look at that. The piping. So there's a yellow line, black lines running into those chambers. Spare wheel here. If you look at the wheel here, it's got you know actual uh, molded in uh, studs, and it's actually a different wheel than these. These are different wheels. Than that one, the spare is a different wheel because this has holes around the perimeter. Anyways, so yeah, it's really really impressive. So you know, if you don't have good vision, not sure if this uh, scale is for you, but uh, it's just nice to be able to collect so many vehicles in such a small amount of space. You know. I'm just getting back into the 164 scale, you know, seeing cool videos from the Lamley Group, Hot Customs, uh, JDK, Diecast something? I, I apologize, I'm pretty new to the 164 scale, at least the modern stuff. But anyways, after seeing all those videos and buying some 164s, I thought I'd, I'd try to share with the community of collecting by showing you this scale here. Maybe you guys might want to try this scale. And the reason why I'm lining these up is just to show that in the space, in the space of one, six, one car here, in the space of one car, I can put six of these cars. All right, so that's the beauty of going smaller. And I don't think you're sacrificing too much by going to this scale. You know, you're missing out on interiors, but the printing is there. You're missing out on plastic headlights and taillights. But other than that, I think it's worth a, a look, you know. They're definitely not as expensive. These things usually come in sets of four. And probably for the same price as, like, say... I'm guessing twenty, thirty dollars for four of them, so five bucks a pop, which is more expensive than the Hot Wheels, regular Hot Wheels that, that is. So, but I mean, uh, hopefully through this video, you've seen the quality of it. Anyway, so that's it for today. Uh, later on, I'm going to review some of my 164 scales.
you know, just the ones I've collected and recently. All right, take care, guys.